So what's interesting is that we have an equation, we have a homogeneous equation with homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay, so that means if you have v hat equal to zero, it satisfies the equation, right? That's not a surprise because, of course, if, if you have no disturbance, it, the field satisfies the Navier-Stokes equation. But what's interesting is the, it's not the, this trivial solution, but the eigen solutions of this equation. And the eigen solutions can be found in two ways, right? You can either fix an alpha and look for the eigen solutions, which with the eigenvalues being omega. All right. Or you can fix an omega and look for the eigen solutions corresponding to alpha. So in either way, right, you, you, you can see that there are terms that are multiplied with omega, there are also terms that are multiplied by alpha. And there are also terms multiplied by alpha square and alpha fourth. But either way, you can fix, you can either fix omega and look for what are the values of alpha that gives you non-trivial solutions to this equation. Or you can fix values of alpha and look for what values of omega is going to give you non-trivial solutions. So uh, the first way, if you fix alpha and look for omega, that gives you an eigenvalue problem. Well, if you fix omega and look for alpha, that's something more complex than the eigenvalue problem because you have something proportional to alpha here, you have something proportional to alpha square and alpha fourth here, right? So they are no longer linear eigenvalue problems, but it's still something similar to an eigenvalue problem that can be solved numerically. All right. When you fix alpha, does that mean you have a surplus gradient? If you fix alpha, that means you have a certain spatial wave, and you look at how, if you, if you prescribe this spatial wave as an initial condition, okay, how is this wave going to evolve? Is it going to grow? Is it going to decay? So that's what happens if you fix alpha. What you fix omega is that you're saying, I have a particular frequency. Does that frequency support a wave that is growing space or decaying space? So you're just tracking different modes. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. So uh, what's next is really to look at numerical solutions for this. That for a given, for given omega, uh, given omega being real, obtain the corresponding alpha real and alpha imaginary. Alpha real gives me the spatial wave number of these disturbances. And alpha i gives me whether the wave would grow when I travel in a downstream direction or decay. And how fast does it grow or decay? Okay, and, and the solution, the solution uh, alpha as a function of omega also depends on other parameters. Oh, first of all, so you can see the relationship between omega and, and alpha is not, uh, it, it's, it's going to be scaled by this big U, right? So, so the, the relationship between alpha and omega, so we, we should really look at alpha as a function of omega uh, governed by, so let's see, of omega divided by U, right? Uh, so, and the characteristic length scale is UE, right? So, so that's the relationship. So, so omega divided by UE gives omega the same dimension as alpha. And what is the dimension of alpha? It's a wave number in space, right? Per it's per length, right? So, so if you want to look at the non-dimensionalized alpha, what should you be looking at? You need to multiply that by a length scale. So what length scale do we have here? 
we only have, yeah, let's, let's use a boundary layer thickness. So for example, theta times alpha, right? So omega over UE also needs to be multiplied by the same uh, length scale to get a non-dimensional parameter. So theta alpha is gonna be something that depends on omega theta over UE. It also depends on other things like what? What else does it depend on? Viscosity, right? So viscosity should also be non-dimensionalized by what? Theta and UE. Theta and UE, right? So if you write that, it's RE theta, right? right. So that's viscosity. And what else? Hmm? There, is more. there is more because because this whole thing depends on U hat, big U hat. And that's actually infinitely many parameters, right? Um, here we didn't consider pressure because we, we think of pressure as a slowly varying field that indirectly uh, affects the eigenmodes by controlling the shape of big U hat. Okay, so, so big U hat, uh, that's right, is controlled by pressure. And uh, one way to reduce these infinitely many parameters to one is by thinking restricting to a family of solutions like Falcon scan. And if we do that, only H matters or lambda, like whatever you, you choose as the parameterizing uh, as the parameter for Falcon scan equations. So so this is what we'll be looking at. I mean the the way to obtain this is by numerically solving the or sum of your equation for different H uh, for, for different Faulkner scan solutions corresponding to different H's, for different IE thetas, and also for different omegas. All right, so let's start looking at some of these. So, so the modes that grows are called uh, uh, Tommy restricting waves. And uh, uh, so I think I'll just uh, have time to give you two plots of this. So these are for different H's. So remember, we have a three-dimensional function, right? And if you fix the third parameter, which is H, you're gonna get a two-dimensional function. The two dimensions are in terms of the omega, non-dimensionalized omega, and RE theta. And here we are showing the real parts and the imaginary parts. Uh, actually, the imaginary parts and the, then the real parts. The imaginary parts are the more important one because it gives you whether the wave is gonna grow or decay. And this is especially important because this tells you when you have negative, it means a growing mode. And uh, so this is decay and inside here is grow. Okay, so this is for H equal to basically the, the uh, Blasius profile. <laughs> and if you look at H equal to four, which is close to separation, you first see that the growth region is a lot bigger. And also if you look at the magnitude of the growth, so this is minus 0 0.001, this is minus 0 0.04. So the rate of growth is 40 times higher. You need 1 40th of the spatial length, okay, to have the same growth in uh, H equal to four profile compared to a uh, Blasius profile. And also the region of growth is gonna be a lot bigger. So, so as you imagine, you have a boundary layer that increases in RE theta and increases in theta, right? So, so if you follow the boundary layer, you're gonna be doing something like this, right? For, okay, so you fix the omega, right? Fix the omega, track along the boundary layer, you are going through this line. So you don't have any growth here until here, the, uh, the disturbance starts to grow and you have a lot bigger space to grow compared to if you are following the boundary layer here, you only have growth over here. Okay, so, so that is a very significant effect of the profile of the, of the boundary layer. All this comes from solving the or some of the equation.